The Toyota BZ4X is a nice car, but it has some limitations. The cold weather DC charging is the biggest concern of them all, but the DC charging in the summertime also has some limitations. A common concern is the daily limit of DC charges. But is it actually a limitation? We tried to find out in a longish road trip last summer and did a test and here's the results. When the car first shipped in late 2022, it only allowed two 10 to 80% DC charging events per day. That was lifted later in the spring 2023 with a software update and the new limit as stated by the manufacturer is 3.8 DC charges per 24 hours. Oddly specific number. And this all applies to the European spec vehicles with Panasonic batteries. My car is active trim all-wheel drive with Yokohama all-terrain drivers. In the middle of the Finnish winter, it is really nice to try and remember the warmth of the summer, so let's go back in time a bit. Bear in mind that doing long trips on a Toyota EV is an adventure. None of this represents how it usually is driving an EV. Doing the same trip on some other car brand with the same first letter would be really boring. The idea of our test was to drive at least 1000 km without extra brakes or until we see the power throttling in the charging, whichever comes first. The first leg was rather interesting, as we were pretty bold with our guesstimate of the range and ended up going the last 15 km below zero. When you reach zero range in BZ4X, you probably have some actual 8% state of charge left, at least in the summertime, which translates to around 20 km. The small bore in the power bar gives you some hints of the remaining capacity, Meaning, whenever it hits zero, that's it for you then. We had a meal during the first charging session and I had a DC charging power limit at 125 kilowatt to combat the inevitable heat buildup in the battery. The session started some percent below zero and ended up at 75%. The time of the first charge was just before 3 in the afternoon, which will be important information later on. The first leg from 100 to 0 percent was around 320 km, which is not bad keeping in mind that I have the all-terrain tires on. The consumption was 17.5 kWh per 100 km. The next leg was 187 km and the charging session was from 15 to 64 percent. As we took bit faster roads, the consumption for the second leg was 19.2 kWh per 100 km. I'll have the cumulative charging data on the screen from now on. The third leg was 154 km with consumption of 19.6. The reason for the rather short legs is that the charging curve of the BC4X. The power drops rapidly after 60%, so it's not really smart to sit at the charger too long if you want to move fast. The third charge was from 11 to 60%. With this vehicle, it would have been smart to try to aim at the charger with closer to zero state of charge, but since we drove this test in Lapland where the distances are long, we didn't want to risk stranding ourselves in the middle of nowhere in case we fail our calculations. The fourth leg was 126 km worth of a route. I can do blindfolded as I used to commute the same batch of road daily in my previous life. There we first tried our luck at the crowded starting station and then moved on to greener pastures. The fourth session was from 17 to 18% and the fifth from 18 to 62%. We hit another crowded station, but as we needed to choose, we took a bit longer charging event after the 163 km fifth leg. On a side note, as this was in July and we passed the Arctic Circle before 9 in the evening, we didn't experience a sunset during this part of the trip at all. The sixth session was from 3 to 21%. The consumption was in line with the previous ones. Who cares anymore when you have this view? We hit the 1000 km mark at the sixth leg. Parked the car at the charger and went for cold ones as there miraculously was a bar open in the one horse town at midnight at Sunday. Who would have known? Also we knew that since the throttling should hit at 265%, 
This is the place where we would see it. It didn't. It hit around 300% and when we returned to the vehicle, happy as clams, this was the charging error. The charging power was throttled to around 14 kW. It also now came to us that if the car wouldn't let us charge any faster in the following 14 hours, the way back home would be really, really interesting. But being in good spirit, we instead decided to head to the wilderness. There is a place 100 km of dirt road from everything else with a Type 2 charger in Finnish Lapland. That was our place to be and there we drove. Locked the car in and got a good night's sleep. In the following morning we drove to Vegas, or at least Aspen of Finland, Levi, and plugged the car in with handshaking. Lo and behold, the power went quickly up and the car charged like new, even though it now had been either on the road or plugged in for a good 22 hours. The morning charge was from 39 to 80 percent. The bivouac charging event was only 10 kilowatt hour, but AC charges are not counted in the daily limit anyway. We drove the second leg of the day in the beautiful West Lapland and took a long pause at the night resort by the river where the car was plugged into a 50 kW DC charger. This event was from 8 to 88 percent. At no point we experienced any extra power throttling. We crossed the river to Sweden and kept on driving. Looking at the time we realized something. It was still well under 24 hours from the first DC charge of the trip during which the car hadn't rested for 5 minutes. The cumulative energy we DC charged to the car during the last 24 hours was 262 kWh which translates to around 426%. We could have gone on, but the number would have not risen as there is only so many kilometers to drive and kilowatt hours to charge during a 24 hour time period. It is really hard to hit the limit with this vehicle if the trip is anything near normal. We tried the abnormal way also, but that's another story I'm willing to tell also in English in case you're interested. To conclude the experience of the road trip, which was a test of the limitations of the vehicle and also a test of the limitations of a friendship between two dudes, my conclusion is the following. That the daily DC charging limit is not an issue, at least in the summer. And in the winter, there are far worse limitations in play. Also, a test or not, the Finnish Lapland is a really, really, really nice place to do this kind of road trips. Do it, you won't be disappointed.